Ladies and gentlemen, it is extremely important in life to sweat for your sweet. Don't steal. Don't steal. Peace of mind is the most important thing in life. Peace of mind is more valuable than money. You want to walk through life with peace of mind. But if you steal, you cannot have peace of mind. If you kill, you cannot have peace of mind. You'll be haunted. You won't be respected. We all know that Zambia has a corruption problem. We've been through this before. You know, we've been through this. This is not the first time. And under normal circumstances, you would think that people would learn from the past. But it appears power has a very intoxicating effect on people. And it's tragic because the end result is it ends in tears. Look, um, if you have wealth or properties that you have earned through your hard work, your sweat, your blood, your tears, whatever you want to call it, you have sacrificed a lot of time, effort, energy, sacrificed family time, too busy, working hard, day in, day out, utilizing your good gift, given talents, gifts, energies, skills, passion, determination, focus, teamwork, and all the ingredients that are needed to be successful. If you've done that from all these efforts and all these ingredients, there should never be a problem explaining what you have, your wealth. And should anyone in, uh, out there in the public ever challenge you or accuse you of theft, you should welcome that invitation to go public and explain to the public how you got your wealth to demonstrate to the public that you're clean. If you've done that in an acceptable way, in a clean way, no theft, no corruption, you should be able to walk up, to walk with your head high. You should be able to go to the press, to the media and say, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I've been through in order to acquire these properties. You should be able to say, ladies and gentlemen, I can categorically look at you in the eyes and tell you that I did not steal. I worked hard for it. And if you can demonstrate to the public that that property that you have is from your hard work, your talent, skills, energy, passion, creativity, you will be respected. You can categorically tell people that I did not steal. I have never stolen or I have not stolen. This is from hard-earned money and I can prove to you and I'm happy to prove this to you. It shouldn't be hard. It should not be hard. I think the public is fairly reasonable. If you're able to go out there to the media and explain and invite questions and answer those questions from the public so that the public understands, understands and recognizes that you are clean and your family is clean. Then you will be respected. But if you can't explain that in the media, <laughs> you will never be able to explain it in the courts of law. And trust me, however way you may say you want this case to go to court, the truth is you do not want these cases to go to court or this case or that case. Because if you cannot explain it out there to people, what on earth makes you think that you'll be able to explain it to the judge? What makes you think you'll explain it to the judge? You see, at the rate we are going and with the poverty that the country is suffering and the corruption that we've been through historically, 
I honestly don't think Zambians are in the mood to uh, tolerate uh, theft or corruption any longer. I really don't think any rightful Zambian would be moved by tears. We're not interested in people crying, complaining about being victimized. The, the, the tragedy of this whole situation is people in leadership, their, their inability to learn from past experiences. And I think the country has now reached a point where we all feel, or most of us who are thinking correctly, that uh, we need to create an atmosphere and a scenario in this country that makes it abundantly clear that people who indulge in theft and corruption will be dealt with and will be dealt with severely, legally, of course. Crying is not going to move people. The question here is, did you steal or you didn't steal? If you didn't steal, go to the media, go to the press and say, ladies and gentlemen, I did not steal. I sweated for this. I worked hard for this. This is my property. And I can tell you how I worked hard for it. I can tell you what my pay was. I can tell you what my salary was. I can tell you what my business was that I set up from my hard-earned money and how much it was making. Or I can tell you what loans I was able to get in order to secure these properties. That shouldn't be a problem, isn't it? It shouldn't be a state secret or a national secret, should it? It should not be a problem. So what is your problem? You want to break down and cry so that people feel sorry. But you don't want to answer questions from the press. Why don't you want to answer questions from the press? Why? You should welcome questions to be asked so that you can explain. People are reasonable. If you explain how you got those properties, I think people will be able to assess and make a more rightful conclusion if you feel that what they are suggesting right now is unfair to you and your family. Yesterday I talked about how in a poor country like Zambia, someone can be in possession of 69 motor vehicles. Now it's possible, of course, and there are people in Zambia who are so rich and they can have that, but explain it. Especially if you didn't have it before, and now suddenly you have 69 motor vehicles. Explain it. How did you get those? If you have flats, double-story or high-story flats with millions of kwacha, kindly explain to the people how you got those. Explain. What is your career or your profession or your job or your business or your talent? Explain. Some people say, well, those were senior government people or families of government people. Surely they should be able to uh, access these things and own these things. Of course, nobody's denying that, but they should explain how it's done. Of course, I hope you're not implying that it's okay for them to steal or to be corrupt. I hope that's not what you're implying. Because there's a tendency in Zambia among some who feel that they're entitled to take what is not theirs. There are a lot of people in Zambia who can take a possession that belongs to someone else, take it without permission and begin to claim that it's theirs and actually believe that it's theirs. They begin to believe that it's theirs. That's how pathetic the mindset is among many in Zambia. But that's theft, that's stealing. That's, that's theft. When you take something that does not belong to you and begin to claim that it's yours, you are a thief. When you take something that belongs to the government or the taxpayers and begin to claim that it's yours, that is theft. When you steal taxpayers' money from the government and use those monies to campaign for yourself in your constituency so that you can be elected a member of parliament, so that your constituents can fall in love with you and believe that you're the sweetest person that ever walked on the planet, that's theft. You're not allowed to steal from the government in order to finance your by-election. That's theft. So it doesn't matter what your constituents say in this type of situation. If you have broken the law, you have broken the law. Persecution is wrong, is bad, and should be discouraged. But persecution is when you're being unfairly 
punished for something that you have not done. And if you have not done that, welcome the invitation to go to the press and even to the courts of law and explain how you acquired that wealth. You know that I am the chief executive officer of the Musabwe business organization and it's also there as a cooperative. It's only been around for a short time, just a few years. Just last week, uh, I mean, within, within the platform, we have over 100 people, grassroots Zambians. Uh, a few come from the USA, a few from the UK. We have one or two from New Zealand and I think about three ladies from Botswana. The rest are from Zambia. So over three quarters uh, are from Zambia. Uh, I think in all the 10 provinces, grassroots, ordinary Zambians. And we have uh, discussed and initiated various business pilot projects over the last one to two years. And we are proud of these projects. And we feel that if they work out, we are going to expand them. And some of these projects, all the 100 plus members of the platform are involved in them. But then there are others where it's a subgroup within the platform. So an example would be that 19 Zambians in the platform came together and said they fell in love with a farm that was on sale in Chibombo, which is on the outskirts of Lusaka, and wanted to buy it. The value of the farm is 100,000 kwacha. It's a 10 hectare farm. So 19 Zambians came together under the Msabwe platform, saved the money, saved the money, and eventually we were able to secure that farm last week. We bought the farm last week. 19 Zambians one or two from the USA within this subgroup. I think one or two from the UK and I think one or two from Botswana. The rest, one from Botswana and I think the rest, from, yeah, the rest from Zambia. So out of the 19, maybe five are diaspora, 10 are within Zambia from different provinces. And we bought this farm last week. But look at us. It's through hard work. It's through sweat. These are just ordinary Zambians who are trying to get by. So they see something they like, come together, put their monies together and buy it. They make a down payment on it. And now we have it and we plan to grow maize on it this rainy season. That's acquiring property and owning property legitimately. If anybody were to question any of the 19 to say, how did you buy that farm in Chibombo? Would have no problem answering. And if anything, would answer with a lot of pride, knowing that it might inspire others to do the same thing. Would be more than happy to go to the media, to the press, to say, hey, we talked about it on the platform in our WhatsApp group. We said, all those who are interested, raise your hands. We started putting money together. It built up to a certain amount. And we bought the farm. We'll be more than happy to explain. That is clean money. These are things that we can leave to those coming after us. This is how you acquire property cleanly without stealing from your fellow citizens, without stealing from your brothers and sisters, without living a luxurious lifestyle at the expense of others who are powerless. This is out of sweat, out of talent, God-given talent and wisdom. That's how we acquired that farm. And we intend to buy more land in the months and years ahead. We want to buy a lot of land. This is just the beginning. Other projects that we have commenced, pilot projects, we have a pottery project in Chongwe. We have... Uh, members within our platform who grew soya beans. We have someone from Kapirimposhi. We sponsored him to grow some soya beans. We have a lady from Nakonde. She also grew soya beans. Even in Osaka, soya beans was grown there. Unfortunately, um, the, the, the price at which the government is buying the soya this year is very low. They have offered to buy it at six, uh, six kwacha per kg. 
last year they were offering 11 kwacha per kg so this year they are doing 6 kwacha per kg so that has really uh, short ended the soya bean farmers that we don't know why the government has done that i'm sure there's an explanation but it has really uh, been difficult on the soya farmers because it's very easy to make a loss at that price but uh, people don't want to be stuck with their bags of soya beans they want to sell them off so those who have no buyers are ending up obviously selling to the government at such a small price six kwacha per kg but here on the musabwe platform we said we'll take care of our members and what we offered our members who grow soya beans who we sponsored was that we are going to buy your soya beans at double the price, 12 kwacha per kg. So our soya bean growers and our platform who were sponsored for this project are very happy because we are buying their soya beans, their 50 kg bags of soya beans, whatever number they grow, we are buying it for 12 kwacha each. So they will make a profit, they'll be happy, but we have to figure out what we can do with that soya beans so that we also don't make a loss. And I think what we are going to do is uh, push for value-added products arising from that soya beans like cooking oil and chicken feed. The chicken feed can feed the chickens in Chongwe. The cooking oil, we can make use of it. I think we are about to open a small restaurant. Not I think, we are going to open a small restaurant at the end of this month or sometime in August. Uh, we have already got all the necessary paperwork. It's another one of our pilot projects. And obviously at the restaurant you cook food and we can use that uh, cooking oil for that. Organic, which is healthy. That's good. So these are some of our initiatives and we give out loans. We are proud. I mean, we are proud of what we are doing. But again, what is the point of what I'm saying? It's all out of clean effort. Money that is attained through sweat. That's how it was designed. Man is supposed to toil this earth and work hard for his sweet. You sweat for sweet. Don't want free handouts. Don't want shortcuts. Don't want what is not yours. Don't want to steal. Don't steal. Work hard and buy your properties, start your businesses, advance your education. Let it be out of your sweat. Then you can truly enjoy and walk with your head high.